Hello, today we're going to talk about the top 10 characteristics of a good physiotherapist. So you may have had a physiotherapist in the past or you may be looking for one or you may have no clue. I want to shed some insight on from the perspective of a physiotherapist as I am, what 10 qualities I think you should be looking for. And of course, within that realm, everyone is very individual. So what is more important to you is going to depend on where you're coming from. So the first characteristic that I think is really important that is that your physiotherapist is a really good listener. So they really are there for you. They're not there to tell you about their degrees, their specialties, their big wins. They're not there as a salesperson, but they're there uniquely, not uniquely, but um, sincerely interested in what you have to say, how you're feeling. They're there for you. And that is something that you can usually feel. Uh, it's usually just a kind of a presence in the room and a, you can't fake it. And I think that has to be absolutely there for you to have a really good therapeutic alliance. So the second characteristic of a good physiotherapist or physiotherapist that can work really well for you is that they may have your clinical subspecialty. Now, this is with an asterisk because uh, if you are someone who is coming for a chronic ankle sprain or a knee issue or something that is within that realm of more common injuries, then physiotherapists coming out of their master's program or their doctorate program, if they're in the United States, will be equipped to help you really well with all of those. So you don't need someone with a subspecialty for that. However, if you are looking for women's health, vestibular, hand therapy, something that's a really difficult diagnosis and difficult injury, then you want someone that has education and or experience. So uh, sometimes there isn't a specialty education program for something like a foot or ankle subspecialty, but maybe they worked with a surgeon for many years and saw all kinds of surgeries, injuries, etc. And if that is the case, then that might be someone who has a clinical body of expertise where they can draw from and they can help you to see what's going to work best for you. So that can be an important characteristic for you if you are someone who needs a specialty, but really um, most people will not. So the other qualities become more important. So the third characteristic that's really important is that that is an active, um, that therapist takes an active role. And so what do I mean by that? There have been in the past, many years ago, uh, practices in physiotherapy where there were a lot of passive modalities so machines that are put on your body uh, are placed there and they have some significance and they have some importance with respect to um, maybe stimulating the blood flow so if you've ever had a TENS machine it kind of gives you this little kind of electrical buzz it feels relatively comfortable but what it does for you is only limited to the experience there so it might inhibit some of the pain signals that you're feeling maybe you feel a little bit of relief after it's only really really valuable if you're also moving through range of motion and getting active in your exercises so i think a characteristic that's really important in physiotherapists is that they empower you through active therapy and that can be done in a variety of ways which leads me to the fourth characteristic is that they have within their toolbox a modality or a way of working with you that works for you and so there's all kinds of ways that physiotherapists will work with you. So there's exercises, you may have experienced this and it's quite common to have your physiotherapist give you a home program or do some exercises with you. There are also physiotherapists who specialize in clinical Pilates and clinical Pilates is another group of exercises that may work better for people with neurological issues or people who really need to focus on their core or maybe the other therapeutic exercises just weren't specific or effective enough. Um, there are other physiotherapists that will work with needles, so acupuncture or IMS, and some people do really well with those as well. So if you don't know if you do well with the needles, um, but you do have chronic tightness of your trapezius muscles, that might be effective for you. That might be something you want to try, but it's worthwhile trying because it can be an effective tool. If you're afraid of needles, then you don't want to be working with a therapist that prioritizes working with needles with you and you absolutely count on me to make that call too. 
other physiotherapists are very focused on manual therapy and with that manual therapy they may be improving your range of motion improving the glides of your joints they may be helping you to kind of facilitate movement that's a little bit more functional through range of motion so maybe you're someone that wants to move up through your range of motion in your shoulder like this and that manual therapy helps you to find a little bit better motion. So that manual therapy can be something that's really effective. So having the tool, the toolbox that works best for you is sometimes a little bit of a trial and error kind of situation, but it's something that you will get to know as you move along in your rehabilitation and that you should be able to um, have a conversation with your therapist about what's working for you and draw from that. So the fourth characteristic that is important in a physiotherapist is that they are empathetic, in my opinion, not sympathetic. So when you are speaking to them, looking at them, um, working with them, what is being reflected back at you is your own personal strength, your own personal empowerment, rather than someone who's just there to, um, to mirror back that fear, anxiety, pain that you might be feeling, you know, if, if you've ever been in that situation where you have had chronic pain or a lot of pain and you kind of just want to put yourself under a, a, a big blanket and you're really feeling bad for yourself, that's such a, a, a normal part of human experience. But that physiotherapist should be there to take you out from under the blanket as opposed to, you know, bring more blankets to cover you. So uh, that, that empathy and active empathy by getting you to do more things and see how you can move your body and be less fearful when you move your body can be really critical. So the fifth important characteristic in a physiotherapist is that you like them. <laughs> you have to be able to have a conversation with them, feel kind of generally a good uh, feeling about them. And so that likability factor for you uh, may may be really important and that's okay. So I have encountered patients who actually are, are not super interested in that. In fact, do not want to become friends with their therapist, do not really want to have conversations and even don't really want to speak during a session. And so you can also just say that to your physio and say, you know, I, I find that my therapy is more effective if I just kind of go within and watch my breath. Um, some people prefer like a flat affect. I actually had a physio, not a physio, I had a patient that told me um, that he prefers people who are kind of a little flatter. I'm like, well, it's interesting that you chose me because I'm, I'm definitely not that therapist who's going to be kind of monotone and flat. Um, and so sometimes, you know, you, you, you never know what's going to surprise you. But it is important to have someone that you can have that relationship with because you don't want to be kind of grinding your teeth because you're annoyed by them. And everyone has personal preferences. Number six, um, let's see, oh, there's a few more, but I think for me, that number six characteristic that um, is a, a quality or characteristic of a good physiotherapist and for you specifically is someone who's going to be really open and honest with you. And open and honesty is, I think for the most part, one of those values that we learn about in school, that people are attracted to the field of physiotherapy, that idea of integrity, that idea of you're going, you're not going to be dishonest, you're going to, um, you know, act the golden rule of act uh, onto others as you would like acted onto onto you. It's been a while since I went to church, um, but uh, basically, you're going to find that 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 does permeate the realm of not just physical therapy but um, medicine and the health healing professions. However, there are exceptions and I am going to, um, I'm, I'm very diplomatic, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna be controversial, but you're gonna be like, this is not so controversial, but that's just me. I'm gonna be a little controversial in saying that I, I really think there's no place in medicine for a paternalistic, um, placebo effect of yeah that feels good you're doing much better in order to help that person believe they're doing much better um, I do know that some physiotherapists will do that and, and you know as they're working with you and as they're mobilizing the joint whether or not they feel okay that or see that that range is improved they might uh, over exaggerate that improvement and for me there's no I have no place um, that, that just is something I could never incorporate into my practice because I really, really value that 
100% transparency. And so that doesn't mean that I'm not going to report, yes, there's an improvement in range of motion, that I'm gonna say, okay, this, this is feeling better, that's looking better. I'm just not gonna exaggerate it. I'm not gonna put on a magic show. Um, and so I have a really strong bias. Some people I know effectively work with the placebo effect. Um, but usually those people aren't, aren't, aren't the ones that are watching this video on how to, um, how to identify good characteristics in a good physio. So that might not be you. So that transparency, what does that look like? That will look like saying, you know what, I haven't seen that many injuries like yours or I have seen lots of injuries like yours. This typically gets better in this many days. I'm not really sure about that, but I'm only gonna look into it. I think maybe you should see this, this, this chiropractor for, the, for this kind of adjustment if that's what you're looking for. Or let's have you go back to your, your physiatrist or your neurologist to, to look into a little bit further um, where we wanna go with here. And so that doesn't mean that a transparent, open and honest physiotherapist is always gonna refer you to another provider or is always going to admit to things that they don't know because quite often they, you know, they may have it covered. But you're just gonna get that sense of, you know, you're in that, you're getting the inside scoop uh, and you're not getting the polished version necessarily. Uh, you're really just feeling like you're dealing with the person that's being open and honest with you and that you're being respected in terms of your own intelligence and your knowledge and how you're able to filter it. Number seven, the seventh quality that's important in a physiotherapist, that they're not all about business. So if they're asking you to come back, that it's because you they feel in their professional opinion you should come back at this time they might give you a couple of options um, in terms of what will work for you and your body but you 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 trust that they're not asking you to come back because they're trying to fill a slot because they're trying to make money and i feel like this is a a given um but you know with with rents going up with uh, overhead costs going up you just want to look out for that and you just want to feel really comfortable with that. And again, I think most physiotherapists, I hope most business owners are really good with that, but it is really important. I feel like there's no place for that in, in the field of healing. And I know business is business and people need to make money and I respect that, but you don't want to feel like you're being marketed to. You want to feel like you're being treated as a person that is really trusting in this profession of physiotherapy. Number where are we, gosh, eight or nine, whichever we are, I'm gonna do two more, um, is education. So some people ask about education, you know, are, are there extra courses that people take? Is there uh, one degree that's better than the other? Is it better to be a doctorate or a master's or an undergraduate? And I, and I feel like ultimately, no, uh, it is very difficult to get into the master's. I did do the master's at UBC. It is difficult to get into that one, but I know amazing physiotherapists that got into um, masters that were overseas and there are no better no worse than the others so I really think it's about your practice how you practice and maybe your continuing education so finding out about the continuing education that that therapist did can be important you might see that they they um, have a keen interest in a certain field you may see that they just are lifelong learners and really are really dedicated to learning as much as they can for their patients. So education, as much as some people put a little bit of a credit in maybe which school you went to and how far you went in your education, I don't think that that is necessarily important, but where you've taken that later on, whether that's mentorship, whether that is just specializing in different fields or doing, you, you know, your education doesn't necessarily have to be formal. It can be how you speak with clients, but uh, do look into what your physiotherapist did after they graduated. So here's the last, I'm going to call this the 10th, um, in terms of that best characteristic um, for a physiotherapist or one of the top characteristics for a physiotherapist that you're going to work with. And that is that they are willing to change. So they're willing to not stay rigid in terms of how they see your body and they're not going to put you in a box they are and this kind of ties in a little bit to that listening and that they're really there for you but physiotherapists as they kind of move along in the profession they see a lot of different things and it becomes efficient to organize those things in terms of their brain this is what i'm being presented with and this is how i'm going to treat it um, but when you have someone that you're working with 
that presentation of that injury or there could be a different body part will change over time. That person's goals will change over time. And you want someone who is really kind of keenly looking to always explore with you because your body is constantly changing and your strengths are constantly changing and that principle of exploring your movement exploring what's happening through your body is how you continue to grow and the physiotherapist should be there to explore that with you and so that does it takes a little bit of extra energy it takes retesting and reassessing re-looking at re-offering you know looking at we know that ims works for you but let's try clinical pilates we know clinical pilates work for you but let's get you in a yoga class because I can see that you're not really breathing and I can see that you're a little disconnected from your body and then we can move back there. So someone who's willing to mix it up for you, to grow alongside you, be there to cheer you on. These are some of the characteristics that I hope for you in physiotherapist and they, nobody's perfect, um, but everybody should be striving to provide quality of care, quality of care um, that combines most of those characteristics because really it is a privilege, it is an honor to be working in this way. It's an amazing and wonderful job. It's an amazing and wonderful connection that we get to have with patients and we learn from each patient that we're seeing. And so um, that's why I wanted to provide that for you. My name is Mary Stern. I'm a physiotherapist. I have my own clinic, Blue Ridge Physiotherapy in North Vancouver. And I also work at Trinity in Burnaby. In Burnaby. And um, I have some information in the notes below. If you'd like to see more content, please, subscribe and also please let me know in the comment section if you subscribed and just a one sentence about who you are and maybe what you're dealing with your injury or a little note something interesting about you so i can get to know who's watching this thank you so much